now in uh, working with polymer clay. I love the colour and the texture and just the, the feel of the medium really works um, beautifully for my style. Sort of haven't looked back since. I did actually prepare a something I can do, so a demo wonderful, for wonderful, if you yeah. like. Cool. Um, this is a technique called Makume Gane. It's based on a 17th century Japanese metalworking technique and adapted for polymer clay. It's one of my sort of favourite techniques uh, to use actually and this is sort of one that I've just done in the last couple of days. So you get all different kind of colours and patterns coming through. This is sort of the circles but this is also the same technique but using a texture sheet. Slightly different so it's all sort of sh little shavings come off and, and this is the sort of the end result after that. But I can do a little demo. So I've got some blues. So basically you're just creating a stack. A few bubbles in that. Oh. Pasta machine, which is one of my favourite tools. This is your everyday pasta machine. Oh, but it works wonderfully for polymer. So it's pressing those layers. The original technique was done with um, lots of different types of metals and they create a billet. I have like almost no idea where this is going. <laughs> but, yeah, um, the results are often oh. quite surprising. And then you can do it however you like, but this is just a bit random. Make sure that's joined. It's got some scrap clay here, I'll use that as a bit of a backing. So it's just a bit thicker. So the layers that you can see there are really super thin. Colors coming in. Lots of information kind of thing happening. And then I've got this wonderful slicer here. It's like a little mini guillotine. You can do it by hand, and I started out doing this by hand. It's very hard to get consistent thickness all the way through when you do it by hand. So just make sure that's adhered to the back sheet. Now normally I would wait a little while until that sort of the clay firms up, but we'll give it a go. We'll see, see what we get. So lots of in each slice is quite different. It's a bit sticky in this hot weather. But um, yeah, and then you can just keep going if he wants to cooperate. So often I'll put it in the fridge and it'll firm up and You've even got those and then I've got a whole heap of cutters and things to, um, you know, and you can just use sections of that to make um, brooches, earrings, necklaces. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. That's amazing. The other project, so I've got my butterflies. This is a bit of a signature for me. I do come back to butterflies all the time. They held a lot of meaning for me. Some of that um, became earrings. Hopefully, um, a rather large, sort of oversized brooch, I think. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, sometimes I do little vessels, but yeah, so the pattern's all the way through. And again, that's sliced really evenly using this machine. Yeah. Mm. So I've got all these little cutters that are made by a friend um, of mine in Brisbane. So she makes them at her home studio as well. Another polymer artist. Lots of teeny tiny cutters. Well, cutters everywhere. And then I never seem to have the right shape, so I end up making my own templates anyway. Colour, I play with a lot of colour samples too, just mixing different clays and just keeping a rough record of what colours mix to get what. And it's always a bit hard to have different oranges and so many different greens. So they're a bit of fun too. For the pasta machine. Oh right, true. Yeah, so we're really getting to it. Yeah. It's quite noisy, okay. um, but it's fantastic. Yeah, so that just goes on on the end there. Wants to cooperate. Yeah. And that way I can use both my hands because often I'll do really long thin pieces and roll those up. 
yeah, it moves a lot faster. So uh, with the clay, it comes in blocks like this and you do need to condition it, which basically means just softening it up and getting it to a workable consistency. So um, the plaster machine is used for um, that as well. And when you're doing large quantities or big blends, colour blends and things like that, the motor is really great for that. Mm, that's beautiful. That was great. My dream one day is to turn this into a little miniature sort of closet gallery. So having artworks all on the, the walls. But at the moment, so I've got all my tools here, a stash of all my polymer clay, different brands and you know, translucent clays and metallics and lovely um, bits and pieces there. Yeah, and I do have a light box in here. So I do my, all my photography, special little box, which is a perfect size for me. Yeah, this is another latest piece. I was doing a collection of sea urchins. So I've got some in inspiration, sort of the real thing here. This is um, the brooch, sort of a bit of a prototype there. This is some other sea themed, very detailed um, pieces with some little sea anemones and, and mushrooms. Oh, they look beautiful. <laughs> the colours are so nice. Um, yeah. Bits and pieces. This is some wings that I'll make up into earrings. All the little elements that come Gorgeous. together, findings and bits and pieces. I do love ceramics, but it's colour um, of polymer just really just draws me back. Mm. You know, you just can't get that kind of colour um, in ceramics, not all the way through the, the clay. It's also a very clean medium as well. So I'm a very clean kind of person. <laughs> so it's nice to, to work with that. It just feels really good. It's just like working with pure colour. Yeah, so those ones, I don't normally paint my polymer, but these ones have a metal um, coating over the top of them right. in bronze and huh. um, iron. So that's how, and then you can get a um, patina sort of wash over the top. So that's actually real rust. And all of the sort of different um, colours coming through is just because of the oxidisation process yeah, right. that happens. So it's something else I've been playing with and works really well for the little houses. They have a lot of stories with my work. So that collection there is all about picnics in the park with my grandparents. Um, when we were little, we, you know, used to always, there was always watermelon um, there. Um, so it's a really kind of a strong sort of memories for me, especially my grandparents are getting old now and um, in nursing homes and things like that. So that was a, just a bit of a joyful, playful piece um, to celebrate their memory. So it's, a, it's quite a special collection for me and one that I've kind of come back to a couple of um, times and sort of did, you know, different things and worked it up in different ways. But um, yeah, it's a special, special piece. So a lot of my work I try to have um, strong stories and a bit of um, whether that's just the emotional connection with the colours or past events or what's happening in my life it's always sort of seems to be a bit of a reflection of what's going on. These ones are reversible so that's a bit fun. This organic vibe is yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah I did that for an exhibition. These are actually my very first pieces I made with the polymer clay. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> And this is the first necklace, so I've got a bit of a reminder of that was inspired by um, a glass artist actually locally. I bought one of her necklaces. Anyway, decided to try to do a bit of a version playing around and yeah, first pieces. <laughs> True. Yeah. Before I really knew or understood the, what it could do. Doing a new project at the moment, I'm going to work on some doors. So a friend of mine. Margie, who lives across the road and is also part of Open Studios. She's a wonderful photographer and glass artist and she's given me this poster of doors she's taken. So instead of my little houses, I want to do a series of doors. So this is kind of a, a little bit of a prototype that oops, didn't quite work, but I want to have those mounted on the wall, but that all needs to be covered and just working on different textures at the moment. I just like the idea of doors and, you know, some you open, some you close as a bit of a symbolic sort of life story, really. Yeah, so it's the next project, work in progress. So it's a kind of a going on from the houses that I, that I do, but yeah. I've also made some of my own texture sheets based on the materials around our house. So I've got some of the rendered walls, some of the, even the grass I've sort of taken imprints of. So I'll use that for the doors as well. So 